Well, 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 if it isn't yet more material from TV licensing with which I respectfully disagree. Let's take a look at today's instalment. This is an email that was sent to me by Redacted, um, who will remain redacted. Um, but this was in respect of our license, which is due to expire sometime in 2024, which is also redacted, inviting said sender to pay £159 for the renewal of the license. Now, that clearly was not necessarily what they had an issue with because they clearly have a license which is due to expire so fair play for paying the license when it may have been due but i do say that with a hint of caution because maybe it wasn't really due maybe they don't actually need to pay for one because they might have paid for it out of fear of prosecution but i've covered that in other videos and that's not why you're watching let's look at this bit here um the bit they take issue with which I agree um, with the sender, not with TV licensing. I, um, I agree with the sender in that it says here, act now to keep legally watching live streaming or recording TV. Now, clearly the issue I take with this is that it is entirely possible, entirely legal in the right situation to be streaming TV without a TV license because it is only if the TV is live that you need a TV license. Now, if the law were to change and it said, regardless of whether it's live, then obviously my videos would be quite different. But my videos do sort of emphasize this point in almost every video, because this is, in my view, not legal advice, but in my view is misrepresented in so much material. And, it's even misrepresented further in here because this first of the checkpoints here, underneath where it says your TV license is your must have pass to cover over 400 TV channels, it covers you four. Now, even before I get onto the checkboxes, the bit beforehand is already slightly misleading if I'm being really fussy about it because it says your TV license is your must have, suggesting you must have it to watch any of these 400 TV channels, which is obviously not right. But let's say that's just a bit of puff and say, this is a thing you must have and not legally must have, which coming from a prosecutorial body, I don't think they should say. But by the by, let's let brush that one aside. The colon then directs you to the following three points. Now, all TV channels... That's not true, because some TV channels, which I'll go on to in a moment, actually the second portion of this video, after something very exciting, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute, a TV license is not required for all TV channels. I mean, the license covers you for all live TV channels, but there are TV channels that are not live. On-demand channels, for example. Pay TV services like Sky. Well, yes, if you watch live Sky, TV through Sky, you need the TV license. But not if you only watch the on-demand stuff. Does Sky do on-demand stuff? I don't use Sky, so I don't know. And as for this portion here, live TV on streaming services like Amazon Prime, yes, that's fine because it says live TV. So a few things I take issue with in this email, but that's not the only one I received either. I also received this one, which is the online questionnaire of six pages of questions when you are telling them that you don't need a TV license. Now, again, I've been through this before, but I do object to this bit that says the law says you need to be covered by a TV license to watch or record TV on any channel via any TV service, which is not true. You can watch TV so long as it's not live, and I'm going to explain the law in a moment. And then it comes on to these questions here. Do you or does anyone in your household ever watch TV on any channel? And of course, that could include on-demand channels. But presumably, you click yes, and then it goes through to tell you you need a TV license. And then it quite rightly goes on to say that you need to be covered by a TV license to watch TV live on any streaming service such as these ones here, or watch BBC iPlayer. But those of you who pay really close attention will notice that there's an asterisk here. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. And this goes for any device, including your TV. And there's another story that I'm going to come back to at another stage because I haven't heard the resolution yet, but somebody said that they received correspondence to say that they have evidence of what they were watching online 
through their computer or their TV. Now that I find a little bit disconcerting. But if you're not too comfortable with prying eyes looking at what you do online through your TV, then I've got the perfect solution for you. Now I have to caveat this next section by saying I am not encouraging anyone to break the law here. What I'm saying is if you don't like the idea that somebody can be looking through your online activity through your TV, I have a solution for that, which is NordVPN. I'm quite excited about this and I can't believe I've only just found out about it since it's um, about a month since this has been released. This is NordVPN for TV OS. And lucky for you guys, I have an exclusive discount because I've got a nice picture of me on their website here, giving you a huge discount for New Year's with four extra months off with a link that's in the description below. But what is TVOS with NordVPN? What does it do and how does it help to protect what you're doing through your TV online? Well, I find this very interesting because I think this is going to make it very difficult for anyone to prove what you're doing with your own TV. Now, as I said, the caveat is I'm not encouraging anyone to break the law here. If you need a license, you should buy one. But that said, let's look at what tvOS is and what it does. Well, it is a natively supported app for tvOS 17, meaning you can install NordVPN directly onto your TV, of course, if it has tvOS, smart TV. But what does it do? Broadly speaking, it offers a layer of security between your TV and the internet. So there is nothing stored by way of logs as to what you're looking at on that TV. So this will keep your streaming habits, your online activity and your IP address private from anyone looking at it. It will also allow you to access home content while you're abroad. So for example, if you go outside of your country and you want to watch content that is only available because copyright restrictions, many people don't realize this, but copyright restrictions will restrict what you can watch in another country. But this will allow you to simulate an IP address from your home country or indeed another country so you can watch content from that country. In some cases, it will also help to avoid buffering. That's where the playback will slow down, particularly when you're using high definition like 4K, very high quality streams. And this is very often the case when your internet service provider will throttle your internet connection. So if you want to pop over for the discount, the link is in the description. I've got my very own, very shortened URL here, nordvpn.com slash BBB. And that will give you four months extra with the discount in the description below. But it also safeguards your TV from being hacked. And as I said, it hides your IP address by going through the VPN server, which is a virtual private network server. Again, protecting your TV from exploits, just in the same way as someone would seek to exploit your computer. Just like on other devices, it is very quick to connect. You just click the quick connect button and on you go. And you can download it natively on tvOS very easily. But not only will it protect your TV, obviously, if you do sign up for an account, not only does that help me out by supporting my partner for the video, but it helps you to protect your privacy online from threats using their threat protection software, Dark Web Monitor, which searches for your information that's been scattered online somewhere so you can take proactive measures to remove it. And you can create a private encrypted network to share your files between your devices, knowing at all times that it's going to be encrypted and protected. So all of which you can get with a fantastic discount using my link in the description below and on screen here with four months extra free. And if you don't like it, you get 30 days to change your mind for a full money back guarantee. I hope this is useful to you. I paid for it with my own money and I've used it ever since, except for when I turn it off to show you what happens such as if you go to that link, you'll see it shows unprotected and it will show your location and your IP address, showing you that your device is not protected and other people can potentially monitor your activity. So check it out. Thank you for your support. And now let's take a look at an aspect of TV licensing that I think they've completely overlooked. So let's go back to the law. So the much debated, oft misunderstood legislation for TV licensing is broadly set out under Section 363 of the Communications Act 2003, which is an act of law. So it is law. Watch the comment section go crazy on that one. So broadly set out under Section 363, it makes it an offence to use or install 
a television receiver under this part without a license. But what does that mean? When we look at law and what the offence is, we really need to know what the meanings are of these words. So a television receiver, you'll hear me talk about live TV all the time. So let's go back to the definition, shall we? Meaning of television receiver is set out here under the Communications Television Licensing Regulations of 2004. This is what we mean by a television receiver. Now, this importantly sets out how it is live because it is any apparatus installed or used for the purposes of watching TV. Um, but the important bit is in, down in subsection three, which sets out the definition of live. Get a load of this. In this regulation, any reference to receiving television program services includes a reference to receiving by any means any program included in that service where the program is received at the same time or virtually at the same time as it is received by members of the public by virtue of it being broadcast or distributed as part of that service. In other words, live. That whole paragraph could be redrafted with the word live, or two words, live TV. Live TV. So it is not on demand. It is not you go to a website, you click, which I'm going to come back to in a moment, you click and it plays. It is broadcasted to you. And this bit here answers the question, well, what if it's delayed? What if I pause it? And, you know, what if it's an hour later or whatever? Virtually the same time is all delays. So if there's some delay, be it even the one hour later programs, you know, the plus one channels, they are considered live because they are actually broadcast one hour later than the original. But even if there is a delay, even if you pause it or whatever, it's virtually the same time. So that's live TV. But as I said, those of you that are paying really close attention will have noticed the asterisk here. This page doesn't show what that is, but I know a page that does. Let's go to one of TV licensing's own pages to explain certain things. This is explaining the legislation in their own terms. And then here it sets out the law. But in my respectful view, again, this is not entirely accurate. Because this says part four of the Communications Act 2003 makes it an offence to use or install TV equipment to watch TV channels like BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Dave, and international channels without being covered by a TV licence. That is not true because the word live doesn't appear in here. It's live TV as set out here. Broadcast live. If any of these were on demand, then you don't need a TV licence for it. Um, same goes for this one. Um, this one is okay because it says watch live TV on streaming services like YouTube. But in my view, a lot of people are going to misunderstand this and think that watching anything, anything live at all on YouTube needs a TV license, which is not true. Or use BBC iPlayer. But there's an asterisk here. Now, what does the asterisk mean? Because this could have been worded differently to be even clearer and therefore not require an asterisk. But the asterisk is down here, and they even put it in grey, so it's not quite as clear. But I will zoom in, but greyed out or not, I will highlight it for you, so everyone can see it. The asterisk reads, a license is not needed to watch S4C programmes on demand. Note that this asterisk comment here doesn't reference iPlayer. It is the reference from the asterisk from iPlayer. So you can watch S4C programs on demand on BBC iPlayer without needing a TV license. Now, you might be confused because S4C appears on the BBC website, but S4C is just in partnership with BBC. It is not provided by BBC. So you may be confused by that, but it's even more interesting than that. If we go back to this original email, much of which I disagreed with, this section here says, as well as everything on BBC iPlayer, on any device. Now, again, I don't agree with that because it says everything on BBC iPlayer. You can watch S4C on iPlayer, 
without a TV license. Now, what if you think the website here is just mistaken and that, in fact, um, this bit here is wrong? I mean, it isn't wrong. That's what, it's, that's what it says. It is backed up in law. Um, I assure you that is correct. And I'll show you where it comes from. If we go back to the meaning of television receiver, again, this says you need a license for these things. Any television program being broadcast or an on-demand program service which is provided by the BBC. Now, BBC iPlayer is provided by the BBC, but the on-demand program service is provided by S4C, not the BBC. And it's available on iPlayer. So you don't need a TV license to be watching S4C on BBC iPlayer. So also, and that's confirmed on their own website here, a license is not needed to watch S4C programs on demand. On demand, that is, not live TV. But that's not what it says here. In this email, this says, as well as everything, and the key word is everything. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, well, I'm just picking on wording here. Well, firstly, I'm a lawyer. That's what I do. If someone's going to be prosecuted on the wording of an offence, then the wording that they use when giving you the information about the offence should also be equally clear. And it isn't. Well, it is clear. Uh, it's just wrong. Um, because this says, just to be clear again, act now to keep legally watching all of these as well as everything on BBC iPlayer. And that is just not true. I'm sorry, TV licensing, but I don't agree with you. That is not correct. This information that goes out to tell people to buy a license needs to be absolutely 100% accurate, not in the slightest bit misleading. Why? Two reasons. One is people might be buying a license purely off this documentation here. The amount due showing is £159 is £159 that some people need not spend if they only watch S4C on iPlayer, for example, and everything else is YouTube, but not TV on YouTube. And so a lot of people might pay that and not need to pay it because of emails like this. If you're in that category, I would suggest that, not that this is legal advice, it can't be, but you may be due a refund because you've been misled by this email. If you fall into the category where you've paid for a license and you didn't need one, that is the issue that I have with these because it is one of these areas where there are tens upon tens of thousands of people prosecuted every single year for a TV license. In June, um, in the year to June 2022, 47,500 people were prosecuted and 44,000, which is 93%, were convicted of this offence. Were they convicted wrongly? I don't know. This could be the next biggest scandal. But these are just some of the many emails that you guys have sent me, and I do take issue with it. Uh, so leave me your thoughts and comments below. Please do subscribe if you like this content, because 60% of you don't, and I would prefer you do, because that helps YouTube spread my channel to a wider audience. Um, and do check out NordVPN with its tvOS native app, which I think is really interesting to keep prying eyes out of what you watch online. Uh, not that it's encouraging you to break the law. If you need a license, you need to buy one. But equally, if you don't need a license, I hope this video was helpful. And with that, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.